What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Counting Wisdom Podcast. I wanted to talk about the restrainer. You know, uh, the Bible says that lawlessness is happening secretly. Um, secretly in the world, lawlessness is happening. Lawlessness. And so, um, you know, that's why we are going to see fairly normal looking days you know before the rapture because um the restrainer the bible says there is a restrainer holding people back for example you know in revelation uh chapter six once the seals are open people just start killing each other but you see what it looks like in the restrainer is with with the time period of the restrainer is that you see people just fighting and, uh, you know, you have, again, secret lawlessness. So people are committing murders or, you know, other crimes in secret. And then you hear about it in the news, but it's, you know, behind closed doors. It's, you know, you know, it's not every day in the news that you see someone actually caught on video, um, you know, committing a crime like murder. Um, of course, I've seen uh, on the news recently someone who live streamed, uh, you know, themselves committing murder. But, um, you know, we uh, have the restrainer in these days. And so, again, you know, that's going to look like people getting up to the point of you know committing worse sins but yet they have something holding them back where you know nowadays they think oh you know i I have to do this in secret because you know not everyone is going to agree with this or obvious uh thinking could be you know i'm going to get in trouble for this or something and so um, you have the restrainer holding us back. I mean, even when we think about our own sins, you know, we realize that there was something in our mindset, you know, uh, depending on, you know, the sin, you know, there was something in our mindset that said, you know, oh, I'm not going to do that or, you know, I'm not going to go too far. And so... um you know, the restrainer is much needed in this life. And I believe that the Bible describes the restrainer all the way up until the time of the rapture where, you know, he's finally taken out of the way. And that's when I believe, you know, the Revelation 6 seals can be broken, you know, I was thinking about this. Is it, you know, the seals are opened and, you know, it's not Jesus causing people to kill one another or, you know, a war to break out. It's more, I believe, it's, you know, already set in people's minds. But, you know, the restrainer is holding them back. But yet once Jesus opens the seals... He's like telling the restrainer, you know, OK, let them have it, have what they want in a way. Let let them let them loose and see what that gets them. And then, you know, it seems like once the seals are open, you know, the world goes crazy in regards to sin. You know, crazy sins start happening. And then, you know, God's like, OK, now I'm going to pour, you know, let's see what that gets you. And then the wrath of God gets poured out and it's like God gets, you know, fed up with seeing what their behavior is without the restrainer. Obviously, you know, I believe God is upset with people. You know, the Bible says God's upset with the wicked every day, you know, and I think God is upset with people, you know, uh, already, you know, but uh, we have a restrainer in this world that. You know, uh, is, I think, 
uh, on a one hand in regards to the church, keeping the church safe. You know, uh, I think, you know, that's why you don't have, you know, in super mass, you know, a genocide of Christians or something like that. You know, the restrainer is holding people back from, you know, harming the church, harming Christians, but also um, really harming each other, you know, and harming just everybody. And so, um, you know, I wanted to just bring that out that, you know, I believe when Jesus is describing the days of Noah, you know, it is to me, the days of Noah is sort of without the restrainer, you know, uh, and to me, it, it describes a kind of real chaotic city. But I think also, you know, I've made a video on the days of Noah, and I, I believe that verse applies to today, you know, not just, you know, maybe in the tribulation when, you know, I mean, just think about it in the tribulation, you know, for something to happen where, you know, uh, the lawless one sits in the temple of God saying that he is God, you know, people have to be in a really different mindset. Of course, as Christians, we don't think like, um, unbelievers in everything, you know, but to me, people would have to be in a different mindset to really worship, you know, the antichrist. Or, you know, I, you know, it seems like people today are uh, open to new technology these days. But to say, oh, you have to take the mark of the beast in order to, um, you know, buy or sell. To me, you know, even unbelievers, they don't necessarily seem like they would, you know, just take the mark of the beast with, you know, I'm they're not for Jesus Christ, but at the same time, you know, I've been in uh, uh, a store checking out and the the price came to six, six, six. And even the checkout stand uh, the the cashier was like, oh, you know, he was he was off. put. you know, he was bothered by the number six, six, six. And so for people to actually take the mark of the beast, you know, I don't know if people are in that mindset, you know, even unbelievers I'm talking about here. And of course, Christians know, you know, not to take the mark of the beast, but I don't know if people are, you know, there yet. Of course, God knows, you know, I only talk to so many people in my day, you know, each day, but still, you know, I don't know all people, right? But, um, you know, to me, um, it would have to be the restrainer, you know, coming out of the way. And then, you know, more people are given over to sin, where, you know, now there is an even more mindset of carelessness, where, you know, they don't care about whether it's the mark of the beast, or it's found in the Bible, or, they can look it up in scripture and be like, oh, you know, I'm not going to take that or something or not be weirded out by it. You know, to me, you know, the world would have to really change a lot, you know, and I'm just, you know, analyzing, you know, uh, you know, from my uh, perspective, you know, my small perspective, you know, of the world. But um Anyway, you know, uh, in the days of Noah, you know, it seemed like, you know, everyone, you know, it seems to me that everyone was really committing big sins and not just, you know, hiding it or anything like that. It seems, you know, of course, we're not really told everything, but, you know, the, it seems like the world would have to be pretty bad for uh, you know, got to, you know, uh, cause a worldwide flood. Um, it doesn't seem to me it would be like, you know, uh, the news today where, 
you know, there's uh, sin happening, but it's not like, you know, everyone, including the news people, including, you know, there's still Christians here. There's still, you know, uh, even other religions, you know, talk about good works and stuff like that. And I don't know, I'm maybe getting off track here, but, uh, you know, uh, and the days of Lot, you know, it, that's a little bit of a different story because we're given a little bit more details, you know, that it, it was young and old. It was a big group of people that were looking to commit sexual abuse towards, and you know, those angels, you know, and Lot. And so uh, it wasn't like, oh, you know, they just automatically decided to, you know, try to catch these angels no, it was something that they were already practicing, you know, and it was like this collective group, you know, and it's it's to me to kind of describe it in my view of how I think it how I think it was is like you, you when you see people gathered for a riot or a protest, you know, and it's masses of people. Well, it's a little bit different today. You know, I don't know if it was that many people, uh, but it was a huge group of people that were committing a, a terrible sin, you know, and it was some sort of sexual abuse uh, type thing. And, you know, to be honest, that is going on. And don't get me wrong here. I, I think we are in the days of Noah and I think we are in the days of Lot because I just saw in another country that uh you know a group of people did commit a sexual abuse towards uh someone you know and i this is not the only story i think this was you know not only uh a few days ago but also i heard of another story like this uh just a few weeks ago you know maybe maybe uh what four weeks ago you know a month ago or something like that, where it was a group publicly doing something like that. And so, you know, um, as far as the restrainer is concerned, you know, to me, it may be the restrainer is starting to pull back, you know, uh, that's why, you know, the rapture, uh, you know, we don't know when the rapture is going to be, but to me, you know, maybe the restrainer is starting to you know, you know, uh, pull back because, uh, you know, I do see more and more news stories that are, uh, you know, crazy. And, um, you know, I'm talking about sin wise, you know, just like crazy, crazy news stories that I'm like, whoa, that, and of course, you know, I don't know if some of you know, it is either true or false. You know, I do hear that there is, you know, fake news out there where, you know, they don't necessarily verify all the details before they post something on the news uh, station. But anyway, regard and regardless, you know, it's still, you know, a crazy post, you know, that I sometimes wonder, you know, how did this news reporter even uh, muster up the courage to type this out because it was just such a bad sin. But anyway, um, you know, I think, you know, when the rapture occurs, you know, I, I do sort of agree that the restrainer is, you know, tied with the church that at the rapture, you know, the restrainer is leaving. Now, I don't know if, you know, it's always, you know, the restrainer is always, you know, representative of a Christian, you know, because, you know, Christians are not always aware of the different sins that are going on, you know, in people's lives to be standing over their shoulder and saying, you know, hey, don't do that. You know, to me, this the restrainer, which 
I think other people say this too, is the Holy Spirit, you know, that regardless of if a Christian is there or not, you know, there's the Holy Spirit or uh, an angel of some sort, you know, the holy angels that are restraining, you know, or, or it's just God's presence, um, whatever the restrainer is, you know, um, you know, clearly there's coming a time where, you know, there is no more restraining, you know, and so people are given over to, you know, whatever sins that they can think of. And so, um, you know, I think that um, it is synonymous with the rapture. You know, of course, I don't know, you know, and I don't think, you know, really anyone can know, even though they may say that they, you know, have it figured out. You know, I don't really think that they know, you know, and I think you can double that saying for the timing of the rapture. You know, I don't I can't really see how someone would know that even if, you know, oh, they've read the Bible, you know, 50 more times than me or you, you know, for that matter, you know, to me, the Bible is, you know, not telling us only that is really telling us that, you know, hey, we don't know when, you know, the rapture is or the return of Christ is. And on on the other hand, you know, not every Christian believes in the rapture in the same way. You know, people believe in the second coming and people believe in the return of Jesus Christ. But, you know, not everyone really believes the same way. As You know, I like to mention in most of my rapture um, uh, little podcasts is that, you know, the five wise virgins and the five foolish virgins, you know, five were ready and waiting, you know, and, um, you know, they weren't saying in their heart, you know, oh, my master's delaying is coming. You know, they weren't saying, oh, you know, I know that Jesus isn't coming here you know, in any time soon, you know, and they weren't saying in their heart those words. And so they were getting ready and then they fell asleep. But the five foolish virgins, they didn't get ready. They didn't, you know, prepare. And so clearly, you know, it's an obvious story telling us that it's good to be ready, you know, and it's good to be wise, you know, in in the standards of the Bible. You know, I don't think it means, you know, we have to know, read a whole bunch of books, maybe, you know, of course we should read books, but, you know, to me, the main part of what the Bible calls wisdom, as far as, you know, what is revealed to us, is, you know, following the word of God, you know, in general terms, you know, following, following Jesus, the Bible calls Jesus our wisdom. And so, um, in the five wise virgins and five foolish virgins, it calls them virgins, you know, and, um, you know, not everyone is called a virgin or a servant. You know, I don't think unbelievers are called virgins or servants, you know, and so, um, I think, you know, we should expect, you know, just like in the parable, you know, a group went in to the wedding feast and a group did not go in. You know, and so um, I on one hand, I don't think we should really get overly concerned with the timing of the rapture, you know, and I say that, you know, just, uh, you know, knowing that, hey, we all, you know, as Christians want to get out of here and go to heaven. But at the same time, you know, uh, you know we have to have patience i think is what you know is the fruit of the fruit of the spirit is patience and i don't want to always talk about patience you know sometimes we want things now and 
you know, but God, we shouldn't get upset with God that, you know, the rapture isn't happening when we want it, you know, and I've had to learn this, you know, that, you know, the rapture is going to happen in God's timing and, you know, God in all of his wisdom, you know, knows when the proper time it is for us to, you know, uh, I mean, for him to send Jesus back, you know, and, um, I think we should just, uh, you know, continue with our life, you know, uh, start that business that you want to start or, uh, you know, preferably, probably, you know, if you don't have a job and you want to start a business and do that, you know, because the Bible talks about working, but, you know, uh, go to a park, go see a movie, you know, um, maybe watching more Christian movies than not you know, keeping, seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, you know, I, I would say keeping that first in everything we do, but, um, you know, we still have to take care of our responsibilities, you know, and we can still store up treasure in heaven, you know, um, God didn't necessarily put a limit on, you know, the treasure, even though we don't know exactly what, it is going to look like for treasure, but, um, we can enjoy our Christian life. You know, um, I think if you're not enjoying your Christian life, then, you know, can press on, you know, press on until, you know, add that to your prayer life that, you know, we, Jesus came to give us an abundant life and that, you know, life doesn't have to be dreadful, you know, every minute that you know we can find joy here before we get to heaven and i think that's the summary of you know i think the joy comes from god you know i don't know if we should just you know pursue happiness any type of way you know but at the same time you know i think god wants us to wait on him but wait on him in peace you know, and enjoy and uh, not getting super upset that, you know, the rapture isn't happening yet. But going back to the main topic is that it will happen. You know, one day the restrainer is going to be taken away. And, um, you know, I don't think we're going to have to find a bunker to live in. You know, um, maybe some Christians should if they plan on missing the rapture. But, um, you know, I think there is scriptural evidence for the rapture, you know, and and I mean the timing of the rapture, that it's pre-tribulational, that there is a flight out of here before the tribulation that we should all be expecting to reach, you know, to to get our ticket on there. And I don't think every Christian goes in the rapture because I think there are, you know, fake Christians out there. You know, I think, you know, uh, not everyone who's in church, you know, they're unbelievers come to church, you know. So, uh, you know, every person that we say is a Christian, you know, may not fully be living up to the standards of Christ. You know, God said, if you love me, keep my commandments. You know, and so um, those are things that the wise virgins are doing, you know, uh, in the story, they are told they told the foolish virgins to go and buy, uh, buy for yourselves, you know. And so to me, hey, if we want to be wise virgins, you know, that is our advice right there, you know that uh we should be going and buying you know i know when the bible talks about buying it says buy the truth and don't sell it you know and so we should buy the truth in our life that we live by the truth of the word of god and you know not necessarily worrying about everything else you know but hey if you uh you know think you're a foolish virgin then hey the time is now to uh you know really get on the ball and of course 
I think I will shift over and say this, that, you know, we're all headed towards death uh, if the rapture doesn't happen. And so, hey, it's good to be prepared for that day. I think spiritually, but also, you know, uh, just praying about, you know, uh, and researching, you know, what happens when a person dies, you know, looking at sermons about what happens when a Christian dies and, you know, um, getting, doing research on how we are secure in Jesus Christ that, you know, God has, has taken care of the day of our death that we're not going to go to hell for one but also that we'll be instantly in the presence of jesus and um then you know uh i'm sure we're going to see the new jerusalem you know the bible doesn't necessarily say that when we die we go to the new jerusalem but it is implied that you know when a person dies they go to the new Jerusalem, you know, Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. And, you know, so clearly, you know, God is preparing a place for us. And it's implied in the Bible that it's the new Jerusalem, you know, our home there. And so even though, you know, hey, I'm 30 years old, you know, if I live till I'm 80 or 90, you know, I have uh, 50, 60 years, more, 60 years more. And yeah, you know, that does seem like a long time, but you know, if I'm not prepared, you know, and I'm not preparing, then that day can come, you know, pretty quickly, let alone, you know, uh, reaching that day before I think I'm going to reach there, you know, whether that be cancer or, you know, a car accident or, you know, getting shot or stabbed or something, you know, and dying, you know, um, I believe God does promise us, you know, long life, especially if we do certain things, you know, one of those things are, um, you know, honoring our mom and dad, but also another thing is, uh, fearing God and keeping his commandments in Deuteronomy 529, it says, um, oh, that there was such a heart in them that they would fear me and keep my commandments always, that it might be well with them and with their children forever. And so uh, Proverbs talks about wisdom can extend our life. And so, you know, anyway, you know, we're all headed towards that day where we stand before Christ. And so, you know, it's always important to get ready and to just clean up our life. You know, maybe we shouldn't have that extra drink of alcohol. You know, maybe you should think about not drinking alcohol if you feel like you want to do that. Maybe you feel like, um, you know, you're something is prompting you in your heart to, say sorry to that person, you know, that you offended or to, uh, work on not cussing or, you know, I'm just trying to give some example of things that we can do to like, you know, become a better Christian, you know, than we once were, you know, and, uh, really just, you know, if we, if you read books of Peter, you know, and, um, the book of first John, you know, Peter's telling us that we should be living godly and righteously in this life that, you know, we don't have to feel afraid to live godly that, you know, Peter is telling us to do that in the last days that, you know, it's, you know, God has already approved our work, like it says in Ecclesiastes. And so, you know, um, it's going to pay off, you know, uh, irregardless of, you know, the timing of the rapture, you know, if you prepare now, there are so many benefits of preparing now. And, um, you know, hey, but like I'm saying, you know, if you want to get married, you know, get married, you know, if you want to have kids, you can have kids, you know, and I'm obviously I'm not speaking from, you know, oh, I'm approving it, but I'm just saying, you know, we should carry on with our life, you know, and 
you know, uh, read that book. Or, you know, if you want to travel to Israel, you know, travel to Israel, you know, but um, still, you know, when we, as we, you know, fall asleep, like the parable talks about five wise virgins and the five foolish virgins, you know, they fell asleep ready. And I believe, you know, sleep, I agree with one of the videos that I, I watched uh, another minister, you know, he's talking about sleep is like the rhythms of life where we're just, you know, carrying on with our everyday life, you know, going to work and stuff. And that represents sleep where we just, you know, get caught up in uh, living for Jesus and we don't think about, you know, certain things so much and we're just already ready. But you see people who get caught up in life who are foolish, you know, the foolish virgins, you know, they get caught up in life, you know, starting that business, getting married, having kids. But yet they aren't ready, you know, and, you know, and that's the point. And so thanks so much for checking out this podcast. You know, um, hopefully it was helpful to someone. Hopefully you got something from it. Um, and, uh, if you want to become a Christian, you can go to my website and click on give your life to God, you know, but also you can, uh, really, uh, you know, read the Bible and Romans, you know, uh, the book of Romans talks about how, um, if we confess that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Um, and then um, I have a website that I like. I read from every, every now and again, which is gotquestions.org. Uh, they have a lot of good videos on there, um, even though I don't agree with everything that they say. But you can learn about how, what it takes to be a Christian on that website. And so um, thanks so much. And I will talk to you on the next one. See ya.